All right, so we are recording. Thank you everyone so much for coming tonight. Um, if we could just ask you to mute your lines um, so we don't have any background noise, that would be amazing. Um, my name is Kristen. I'm super excited to be here tonight. I'm happy um, and, and thrilled that Kate Burke, our resident tech expert, is here. She decided that this would be a good idea and she volunteered to put this together. So shout out for Kate. High fives, you know, emojis. Like she's so awesome. If you don't know Kate, you are going to know her tonight. She is an amazing executive leader on our team. She is working a full-time job. She's an occupational therapist by day. She's also a sex educator and a goddess with Athena by day, night, weekends, <laughs> as well as an awesome executive leader with our team. She's got a phenomenal team that she's growing. She's well on her way to silver, and she is really, really, really good when it comes to anything technical, um, from printing stuff to Google Drive to Facebook Lives to she's just, she's just overall awesome. So she's going to share with us tonight her secrets, her tips, her tricks on how to crush technology in your Young Living business. So Kate, take it away. All right. Hi, everybody. Take notes, guys. Take notes. Um, so a couple things, um, I'm, I'm guessing that some of you who are on here tonight might be new to Zoom. So you may have heard Kristen and I asking you to mute your, um, your feed. So if you can hover over yourself um, and click on the mute button, that just kind of helps uh, to cut the background noise. Um, I am going to share my computer screen when we're talking. I just... I feel like it's weird if I'm talking and you can't see my face. That like, weirds me out when people are talking to me and I can't see them. Um, it, again, if you sort of hover down near the bottom of the Zoom screen, you'll see there's a little um, button for chat. If you click on that, it should open up a chat bar on the right-hand side. I see Alice has already um, checked in over there. So the chat is a good place. Um, if you want to say hello, let us know that you're here. Um, Kristen, are you recording? Okay. Um, and then um, the other thing is the chat is a good place to put questions. I'm going to try not to pay attention to that um, too much while I'm presenting, but I will try at the end to kind of make sure that I address people's questions. And Kate, I will be the um, moderator and monitor the chat to see if awesome. there's anything that pops up and I will give that to you. That'd be super helpful. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing um, I was going to say is that I, this, I could probably make this class eight hours. Uh, so we're not going to do that. So <laughs> I'm going to try to kind of keep it sort of simple tonight. And then if there are particular things that we, that people are more interested in or have questions about that we want to dig into a little more, we can certainly do these again. Um, so if we don't get all the way into the thing uh, that you're interested in or whatever, uh, let me know. I feel like this is also a topic that could sort of be a series of classes. Um, and then uh, like we do in our oil classes, um, I am going to try to follow a script tonight. Um, those of you that know me know that I can talk. Um, I think I was born with the gift of the gab and I have kissed the Blarney Stone. Uh, so for uh, out of respect for all of your time, I'm going to try to stay um, on topic. Okay, so if any of you on here have not filled out the Google form that I posted um, in the Facebook event for this class, um, that would be helpful if you could do that. Uh, that's going to give me sort of an example to show you kind of how the form um, can be used. Maybe, Kristen, you can throw that link over in the chat if you have a second. Um, I know a lot of people have done it. Um, if you can't do it, it's not a huge deal. It's just um, the more people do it, the more data there is, and then we can have a little bit of fun with it. All right, so I am going to flip over to my screen and kind of walk you guys through how we use Google Drive. So if you are not familiar with Google Drive, it's basically, I feel like I need to move you guys over here. Okay. Um, it's basically an online uh, drive. It's a place where you can store files. So it's basically a digital filing cabinet um, in the cloud or stored on the internet. 
uh, the thing that is really cool about that, that makes it different from storing, say, a file on your hard drive, is that when you store things in your Google Drive, any time you have access to the internet, you can access those files. For example, I will create a document, perhaps in Google Drive on my laptop, maybe for a class I'm doing or some notes for a 101 or what have you. And then when I'm in a coffee shop somewhere or when I'm you know, in a parking lot, um, I can look at my phone. I have the Drive app on my phone and I can access all of those files now from my phone or from a tablet um, or from a different computer. Uh, so that's kind of the beauty of it is that it's accessible um, from anywhere. The other thing that is really useful, I think, for us um, is that when you make forms and store them or you make um, documents and you store them in your Google Drive, you can put settings on them that make them shareable. So you can create some kind of a document and share it with your team. Uh, for example, I share our new script with our team. And then if I make edits to that document, everyone else can see now the edited version. It's a live document. Um, we can actually, uh, we can edit together. So you can have other collaborators on a document. So for example, Kristen and I have kind of done this in the past, like putting uh, like speed oiling uh, script together or doing a script like that for a class. You can build it in a Google document and then share it with your team and everyone has access to that same document. So you don't have to worry about, oh, did I send somebody the new one or, where is this stored? It's all gonna be in the same place and I'm gonna show you guys kind of how to find that. All right, so I'm actually gonna log out so that we can go right from the beginning. I'm gonna kind of try to walk you guys through this as if like you've never seen it before. So if you have, bear with me and then we'll get you caught up. Okay, so in order to access Google Drive, you need to have a Google account. So if you don't have a Google account, you can just go to gmail.com and make one, it's free. Um, you're basically gonna set up an email account, but that gives you access to your whole Google Drive. Um, I like to think of your Google account as kind of this large umbrella, um, and underneath that umbrella are all these different apps that you can use. They're all kind of stored in one place. Uh, there are several. Uh, we're not going to get into all of them tonight. I'm going to mostly focus on um, the fact that it's a storage drive, that you can do word processing, you can do spreadsheets, uh, forms. The other things that I think that are applicable for us um, for business purposes, um, obviously you can link it to email. Uh, you can do photos and slideshows that might be useful for marketing and whatnot, um, and also the calendar. So I personally don't use the calendar because I'm kind of a Mac girl, and I do most of my calendar through iCal, but you can certainly um, use Google Calendar, and it will integrate with your email and stuff. So it's pretty fabulous. Okay, so you are going to go uh, basically to Google. So I have signed out of my business drive. I'm going to sign back in. Um, you can have multiple accounts. So what I have done is I've actually set up two Google Drives so that I have a business one and a personal one. Um, that's the way I've chosen to do it. You can um, decide kind of what works best for you. Okay, so now I am logged in. And this is kind of the screen that you're gonna um, start with. Um, you'll see over here, my face over there, um, that's showing me um, that that's the account I'm using and that's where I'm logged in. So if I get confused and I'm not sure if I'm in my personal account or I'm in my business account, I can hover over my face there and it's going to show me the email address so I know that I'm in my business account. Um, the other thing I like to point out to people, and this is super helpful, is this little grid here of nine boxes. Um, if you get lost, if you're in here somewhere and you're like, I'm not sure where I am, I don't know how I got here, I don't know how to get back to where I wanna go, I always say, when in doubt, just click on the grid. When you click on that grid, it's gonna bring you back to a place where you can choose from any of the different Google apps and you can go back to where you wanted to. Um, so for now, we're starting in the drive, so I'm gonna click on the little triangle here, um, which is for the drive. That'll bring me back to the page that we were just on. Um, if I wanted to go someplace else, 
say to my to go to maps or I wanted to check my email I can do that right from there so that little grid is kind of like hitting the home button on your iPhone or what have you um, so I usually say when in doubt just go back to the grid if you get lost go back to the grid all right let me make sure I'm not missing anything okay so I want to sort of orient you here to what's going on and I want to show you just sort of some simple things uh, that you can do um, I'm gonna spend probably a little bit more time on the forms because forms are super cool they're very customizable and they allow us to gather um, analyze and track data which is kind of important um, for business purposes but we'll get to forms in a second okay so this blue button here this is new so this is where if we want to make a new um, document or we want to start a new form we're gonna click on that new button and you'll see that when I open that up it gives me some choices I can make a new folder I can upload a file I can upload a folder so folder new folder is gonna create a new folder here in my Google Drive file upload and folder upload will allow me to upload either a file or a folder from my computer so if I have something stored on my computer on that hard drive that's only in my computer but I want to store it in my Google Drive which lives in the cloud then I could do that here so these would be things that already exist on my computer that I want to add to my Google Cloud or to my Google Drive and then Docs that's gonna where we're gonna create a new document um, new sheets uh, sheets is uh, basically a spreadsheet or similar to um, Excel if you've used that in the past slides I'm not really going to get into right now but if you um, click down here or hover over the more it gives you a few more options and that's where forms is so tonight we're gonna focus on forms sheets and docs um, but feel free when you have a chance to go in here and play around it is fairly intuitive you can just kind of click on things and see where they take you you can't really break it and like I said if you get lost or you're not sure come back and find your grid that's gonna take you back to the beginning all right so let's talk a little bit about Docs so if I want to open or create a new document I'm gonna click here on Docs and it's basically gonna open up a blank document so this is essentially like word processing um, so I can start typing here I'm gonna double click in there so I can say hello everyone um, and then maybe this document is going to be notes for one-on-one -on -one with Sarah because she's somebody that I'm gonna meet at the coffee shop tomorrow and I'm gonna write some notes to myself right so do, do, do. okay so I'm not really gonna put a lot of information in here this is just kind of to show you but a couple of things um, in the document. So obviously when you're in here, you're gonna be able to just edit that like you would in any other word processing program. I'm not gonna get too deep into that. I'm gonna assume that most of you know um, how to do basic word processing. Um, if not, we'll deal with that another time. But I've got my formatting bar up here so I can do things like bold and change fonts. Um, and all that kind of cool stuff um, but the things that I really want to show you are um, how you can then share and use this document so one of the things I want to do is I want to title it right now it's an untitled document that's going to make it harder to find so I am going to select my title and then I am going to right click on there um, hold on actually I don't even think I have to do that Yes, okay. So I don't know if you saw what I did there. I'm gonna show you again, because it happens kind of quick. If you select a piece of text and then click in the title bar, it will dump that selected text in there. I'm gonna show you that again. I'm gonna do, um, so I can say that Kristen is the bomb.com and then oh now because I did it already it's not gonna let me I'd have to copy and paste it but if I wanted to change the title I could copy and paste it into there and now we've titled this document Kristen is the bomb.com I mean she really is 
Okay, so then I wanted to just show you a couple of other things. So one thing that's really cool right here is you see, um, I'm hoping you can see this, um, it's gray here and it tells you all changes saved in Drive. So every several seconds, it automatically saves your changes. So unlike back in the day when I was in college and I was using these like dinosaur word processors and you'd write seven pages and then the power would go out or something and then your thing would be lost. Um, it's pretty much saving all the time. So you don't have to really worry too much about that. Um, you can always um, go into, um, actually there's not even really a save button, it just saves. All right, a couple of other things you can do, there's a star here. So if this is a really important document that I'm probably gonna use often, or I wanna be able to find it quickly, I can click on that star and it's gonna kind of flag that document for me. Um, I'm gonna leave that clicked because I'm gonna show you that where that shows up later. And then the other thing that I wanna show you here is sharing. So I mentioned before that you can create a document. Um, so maybe this is gonna be my team meeting minutes because I'm gonna have a meeting with my team and I'm gonna send out the minutes to uh, the people that didn't make it. And then we are gonna store the minutes in our team folder that we can all, um, that we can all access. So I'm gonna go to share. Now you'll see I did a little bit of typing and if you noticed, I saw this click and it updated, it changed, it saved my changes. All right, so over here in share, I'm gonna click on that share button and it's gonna give me some choices. So I can um, enter someone's name um, or their email so I could start typing and I could I am in my contacts so I could select myself or someone else that I wanted to email this to um, the other thing you can do and this is how I shared uh, the form with you guys earlier is you can click up here on get a shareable link now it's going to open up this thing where it's going to give me a link and I can do a couple of things in here so and this is where it's important. If you're, if you're wanting to share a document or a form or a spreadsheet with your team or with a, um, anybody, a customer or what have you, um, you gotta go here to the settings. So right now, anybody who I send this link to can view my document, but they can't edit it. I can click on this drop down arrow and now I can decide who has access to this document. And I can change the access um, for each individual document. So I could have 50 documents in my drive, and some of them can be seen by pretty much anybody. Some can only be seen by me. Some can only be seen by people who I've given permission to. So for each different document, you can personalize that. Uh, so these perhaps are team notes. I want everyone to be able to read it and comment, but I don't want them to edit. So then I'm gonna say that anyone with the link can comment, or I can decide that anyone with the link can edit. You see, those are your choices. And then there's even more. Um, so then this gives you a few other options. You could make the, uh, the document public, um, or you can only share it with specific people. And then again, here you can uh, change the permissions. And I have a document I'm gonna share with you guys later, hopefully, if this works. Um, and I'm actually going to allow you to edit it and I'm going to ask you to write your name in it because I want you to see how it's pretty easy to do that. Um, and it's really kind of neat because you can do, um, say, for example, a sign up sheet. So um, Kristen's going to put together a Facebook Live class and she wants, you know, people who want to sign up uh, to teach in the class. So she could set up a sign-up sheet where she's broken the script down, say, into like eight sections, and she labels each section. And then she sends out the form and says, please write your name next to the section that you want to teach. And then in real time, as people put their names in, um, then the form is updated. And everyone who has access to it can see who signed up for what slot. Um, so it's way easier for um, trying to coordinate stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Quick thing. question. I don't know if this is relating. This is um, <clears throat> pertinent to the spec section you're in right now. Okay. I was asking what's an easy, quick way to add contacts. And I'm not sure if I understand the question, Alice. 
um, to the Google form or in general? In general. <clears throat> okay, add context to what? So um, when Kate was just showing us how she pulled up a list as to who she wants to send the forms to. Oh, okay. okay got it. Add, so, click add your contacts. Okay, cool. All right, I can, um, I can answer that for you. Okay, so the way that you would do that, so in the way that Google is set up is that your contacts are basically the people um, in your email contacts. Uh, so when I, when I did that, when I started to type names, what it did, because again, it's all this big Google umbrella, is it just started pulling what's in my, um, whoever's in my Google contacts list. So what I would do is I would go back um, to my drive and I could go into my email and then in your email is where you would add your contacts. So I can go up here to contacts and it's going to give me an opportunity to add a contact. Hang on one second. It should give me. Oh, wait, hold on. I might've done that wrong. Let me back up a second. All right. Remember I said, when in doubt, go back to the grid. Yeah, it should let me do it in here. Alice, we're going to come back to that. Don't let me forget. We'll come back to that. I don't want to get bogged down in that. But the contacts are, are tied to the email. Um, I'm not sure why it's giving me that screen. There should be a, a plus button, but um, I will find it. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, the documents. So I'm gonna find the document that I'm gonna have you guys write in. But I wanna just show you a little bit about how this drive is organized. So then, so you're like, okay, great, I made a document, but now where the heck am I gonna find it? Or how do I organize this stuff? So you'll see here when you open up the drive, what you have at the top is your folders. So these are all folders that contain various different documents and I've um, labeled them to try to make them make sense to me. And when I come over here, I can, right now you see it says name. So that's telling me that they're being sorted um, alphabetically by name or by the, the title of the folder. And I can click on that arrow and it will reverse the order. So now you'll see like YL January 2018 is at the top because they're in reverse alphabetical order. Um, if I click on that arrow again, it's gonna flip it around and now they're gonna be like an A to Z order. And it puts things like hashtags and numbers at the beginning. Um, so that's why those pop up first and then you'll see like F, G, H. So depending on, you know, what you, you know, if I know I'm looking for something Young Living, that's going to be at the end of the alphabet, I might want to flip mine the other way. Um, obviously, as Kristen mentioned, I also work for Athena's. So if I have a folder that's titled Athena's, it's probably going to be at the beginning. I might want to go from, you know, A to Z. Um, and then below your folders is your files. And it does the same thing. That arrow up here. Um, is so you'll see this first um, file here starts with a hashtag and then numbers. So these are in alphabetical order A to Z with symbols and numbers coming first. I can click on that arrow and now it's going to put my files in reverse alphabetical order for me. So again, things like Young Living that are near the end of the alphabet are going to show up there. Um, the other thing is you can always search. So now you're like, I swear I put that in this folder, but you're not sure, um, you know, you can't find it. It's not in the folder you thought it was in. You can always go to your search bar and start typing um, what you thought that you, um, what you thought you named it. And then, at, so I am looking for uh, the document that I'm gonna share with you guys. I know that, or I think I called mm -hmm. it technology for builders. Uh, so now when I start to type tech, everything 
that has that in the title starts to show up. So as long as I'm close to what I called it, I can find it. So I'm gonna go down in here and I'm gonna open up this roll call file. Um, I'm not really sure, somewhere along the line, I doodled red on my screen. I'm not even sure how I did that. And this shit. All right, so this is the blank, um, and I was talking before about like if you wanted to make some kind of assignment sheet. So I made this form, and if I did it correctly, um, I'm linking, I'm, I'm hovering over here where it says share, and you sh hopefully can see that it says anyone who has the link can access, um, no sign in is required. So I am going to attempt to um, share this link with you guys uh, over in the chat. And then what I want you to try to do, we're gonna see if this works, um, is open up the open up the document and type your name into one of the boxes. Um, if by the time you get it there aren't any boxes left, don't worry about it. This is just an experience. Uh, so we're gonna copy that and then I am going to go. I think I'm gonna stop share for a second. Hi everybody. Hello Adam. Hey. All right, I'm going to attempt to dump that link over here. And let's see if you guys can um, click in there and try to write your name in one of the boxes. And then I'm going to come back to my screen and we're going to talk a little bit about sheets. And then we're going to get to forms, which is super fun. All right, so I'm done in there. Okay, so now I'm back to sharing my screen, and can you guys see that people, you can actually see people typing their names in. So that's an example of how this is a live document. So this is a really great way to um, do things with your team, and it makes it a lot easier than having to, you know, move an email around to a bunch of different people or try to move something around to different people. The other thing that you'll notice is up here, there's all these little, um, there's all these little symbols popping up, anonymous ferret, anonymous dinosaur. Um, these are you guys that are, um, that are, you know, jumping in to the, to the document. And you'll notice, like say here next to Kristen's name, there's this little purple thing. When I hover over that, it tells me that anonymous crow um, is the person who did that edit. Now, if I had you guys all, um, if I had added you by email, and then I would know who you were, and it would show me who made the edits. So if you're sharing a document with some team members, um, you can actually see um, you know, what, who made what edits, and who did what, and who added things. Um, that way you kind of know um, sort of what's going on. So that's hey, kind Kate. of a cool. Yes. Um, so Jody uh, and Julia says, uh, Julia can't get into the document and Jody can get in but can't sign it. So is there settings or permissions that might not be um, happening? They, well, let's see. I have it as anyone with the link. Okay. And no sign in is required. All right. Um, sometimes you can run into that if they don't have a, if they're not coming like from Gmail. Gmail account. Yeah. That, um, that may, Adam is unable to follow directions. <laughs> uh -huh. um, that may be, that may be the problem. I'm okay. not 100% sure. Same with Alice. She can't sign it, but she's on her iPad. So, could, um, I, yeah, I don't know if that's, the, if that's a flash thing. Uh, maybe, uh, sure. Jody's on her cell. <laughs> Julia, what are you what are you using? What what do you what technology are you are you joining us from tonight? Let me bump out of here for a second. Oh, she's on her Mac. Are you signed in from a, a Gmail account or do you have a Gmail account, Julia? I do, but I'm not really sure. I, that's not my main email. Okay. It could that could be an easy. It looks like a lot of people are um either trying to access fight via cell. Um, <clears throat> let's okay. see, iPad. The other, um, hold on one second. I'm gonna grab my phone and try it myself. 
Live troubleshooting, guys. Um, <laughs> Technical support. Well, the other um, the other thing I'm wondering is if it's if you'd be better off in the app. But usually, like if you if if I were to like send this link to you in an email, it should it should open. We'll come we'll come back to that. Okay. We're Table. gonna try to sort that out. All right. At the end, it's not a perfect science. No, it's not. Okay. Let me come back here to my screen. All right, so that's just an example um, and maybe not a perfect one since it's not working for everybody, but we can probably figure some of that out. But that's just kind of an example of how when you create a document, you can share it um, with people um, and they can um, be active in it as well. And so you guys, can, you know, it's, it's a great way to sort of collaborate um, with, team, um, with team members. All right, so I'm gonna close this now and it's saved in there for me, so I don't have to worry about that because remember that it's all um, the Google Drive is always automatically saving. Okay, so the next thing I would just want to mention, we're going to talk, we're not going to get too, too far into, but is sheets. So again, if I wanted to make a spreadsheet, maybe I want to track uh, some of my, you know, my sales numbers, or I want to do a follow-up tracker. I want to create some kind of a spreadsheet where I'm going to track my follow-up with new members. Um, I can go into new and to Google Sheets, and then that's gonna open up a spreadsheet for me. Um, and I'm not gonna get into all of how spreadsheets work because that's its own thing. Um, but if you have some basic Excel um, experience, um, a lot of it is very similar to Excel, but just to kind of give you kind of an example, I can do something like this. I can say name and sign on date and um, member number and then their phone number and are they on ER and then I could start you know some sort of a tracker so I have Kristen and then I have Adam and I have Cheryl and I can keep track of my team and then I can you know just kind of use a spreadsheet there. And again, the same thing, I can come up here and I can title it. Um, it's gonna show it to me that it's in my drive. And this is kind of another cool little thing. I didn't show you guys this back um, with the document. I'll show you here with the spreadsheet. So I showed you here how you can star it if you kind of want to flag that document. You can also click on this little folder and now it's gonna show me all of my folders. So if I'm making something that's for this technology for builders, I can come here and select that folder and move, and it will dump that spreadsheet into that folder for me. So that allows me to save it. And then you can even see up at the top, it tells me that it moved that untitled spreadsheet from my drive to my technology for builders folder. And it also gives me the option to undo or what have you. And I can do the same thing here. I can go over to share and I can adjust my settings. Um, it wants me to give it a title first, um, but it's the same thing. So we'll say, we're just gonna call this sheet one to save it. And then the same, we can, comes back to that same screen. So I can add um, email addresses for people I wanna send it to, or I can come up here and get a shareable link and I can adjust the settings um, accordingly. All right, so I'm gonna get out of there for a second. Hold on, some of my Zoom controls are blocking my Google controls. All right, so we're gonna come back to the drive again. And let's talk a little bit about forms. Okay, I, one oh, quick, sorry. quick break, yep. break right here. We have a question, sure. good segue. Yes. Um, Juliet uh, is asking, is this what you use for all your business documents? So not your personal computer on in folders, Google Drive solely. So uh, it would be a lie if I said that any of my stuff was kept in any one place. Um, that's kind of one of my projects for 2018. Uh, but you certainly could do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think nowadays where more and more people are using phones and tablets and not necessarily using computers with hard drives, um, you certainly can store the majority of your stuff um, mm -hmm. in your Google Drive. 
I think your free account comes with like 15 gigs or something, which is yeah. quite a bit of storage mm -hmm. when you're talking about like mostly text files. Um, and I think Google will sell you bigger, you yeah. know, space um, if you want to do that. Yeah. Um, I probably have like some of my stuff on my laptop and then some of my stuff in my Google Drive. I am trying to move toward having it all in my Google Drive. The advantage there is that anywhere I can get online, I can access it. And I'm not um, at the mercy of, um, you know, having my laptop. Yeah, I would agree. I'm about, I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of a hybrid. I would, my, my goal is to get everything into the drive, but it's just not. Yeah. And for example, like if I am on my phone and I'm scrolling through like the Wicked Oily Hangout and there's some picture that Kristen posted that I want to save, I'll click on the picture and download it and save it to my phone. <laughs> Right, and, right. You know, yeah. And then, or if I'm on my laptop, sometimes I do that on my laptop. And so mm -hmm. I have, you know, pictures and various mm -hmm. things saved in different places. Yes. But, um, and, and Jules, yes, it is in the cloud. So if it's in the drive, it's in the Google cloud. And that is, yes. like Kate said, you get X amount of, of storage in that, in your free account. And then as soon as you max out and, and you're not going to max out really, if you just have a lot of just, um, uh, documents but yeah. if you have pdfs you have files that's when your storage is going to get um maxed out quicker so yeah and even at that like right now if you look over here you can see i'm email too that's another area that's going to cause i'm it. using oh. 955 megabytes of my 15 gigs like that's almost nothing and mm -hmm. i i mean this is all of my two businesses worth of stuff so it's a lot of storage. Um, I've never paid for Google Drive yet. Um, all right, are we good? Should I continue? We are. Okay. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit um, about forms, because I think forms are kind of super cool. So the thing that, that I really like about forms are they're completely customizable. <clears throat> so you are basically creating a questionnaire and you can use various different question formats, which I'm gonna show you. Um, and this is a great way to capture information. So this is a good way to, like Kristen does these every month now for the different promos, right? Because who can keep track of all those names and addresses and who did what? So she makes a Google form that she puts up and then when we you know, place our ER orders or we have enrollments or whatever, we go in and we fill out that Google form. Um, Every question that you see in that Google form, Kristen set that up. She designed the format of the question. She put the wording in. Um, and so you can make them say, you know, kind of whatever you want. I've noticed a few of Kara's lately are kind of funny. Like she, you know, the question might not be like a serious question or some of the multiple choice answers might be kind of funny. You can certainly do that. It's completely customizable, which is kind of neat. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and then the thing that's even cooler about it is then it compiles all the data. And so all of the answers that people give you to these different questions are all now in one place. And you can view an individual's response. So I can go into uh, to the form that you guys filled out for this uh, class tonight and look at your individual answers, or it will show me uh, the whole group's answers uh, basically in pie and bar graphs. So it takes all the data and turns it into graphs for me, which is like completely my favorite thing. Um, okay, so to give you an example, we are gonna go into the one that we made uh, for today. So um, I'm gonna go into my technology for builders folder because I made this folder today to put all the files in that we were gonna use uh, for tonight. Uh, so you'll see here, this is my form, and it's got that purple um, icon. This one here is that little uh, document that we all tried to kind of write our names in. And then this is that sheet that I made you, uh, that I made just to show you guys as an example. So these are all um, the documents in this folder. So then I can go into the form, and this is the actual um, where you are creating it. So now I'm in the template. And so you'll see here that I gave it a title and then there's these different um, questions that are here. So from here, 
I can actually edit this if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that, but I just kind of want to show you that. I got to move this, try to move this zoom bar out of my way. Um, so again, in forms, you have a lot of those same features. You can go into the folders and decide where you want it. You can star it if you want. Um, you can change the color palette. So if you want to customize the color based on like if you have a team color or if sorting or giving things different colors helps you to organize yourself, um, you can certainly do that. Um, the eyeball here is the preview. So as you're building your form, you can, and I'm going to show you how to do that, um, but you can click on the preview and it will give you a preview of it. So that's going to show you what it's going to look like to the person that you send it to. Um, and when I clicked preview, it opened it up in a new tab. So you can probably see here that I have two tabs. I'm just going to close the preview. I don't need it anymore. Um, and then we've got some settings over here. Um, and then we also can go into send. And that's going to give us that same thing like it did before. It's going to give us the opportunity to share the link. And we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so let me back up, actually. And I want to show you how we start a form from scratch, um, just so you can kind of see how that works. And then I'm going to show you the one that you guys filled out, because it's really fun to kind of see a whole bunch of data um, pop in together. Um, I a couple of months ago, I organized one of the Facebook Live team classes that we did. And we have the Google form for people to fill out to enter the giveaway and whatnot. And then I was able to pull all the data at the end and it, it told me who was there, who had invited them. So if they were someone that was new and they wanted to enroll, we knew who to send them back to. Plus it told us like what state they were from, which was kind of cool because you could see that there were people on the call from like all over the country. Um, so it's really kind of neat. All right. So we're, again, we're at the same thing. I want to start a new document of any kind. I click on new. Forms is hidden down here under more, so I've got to hover over more and click Google Form. Now this is blank. This is my blank form. I can do anything I want with it. So here is my first question. And so I'm going to put in here, um, we're just going to be sort of funny. All right, so what's your sign? Now over here, where it has multiple choice and there's a little drop down arrow, these are all the different types of question formats that you can use. So for each question that you build into your form, you can decide what kind of question format you want to use. And I encourage you to kind of experiment here, and I'm going to show you in our sample. I kind of did a couple things on purpose so you can see how the different ones show up. Um, it depends, you know, for example, if you give someone a short answer option, then people can write whatever they want, um, which may or may not answer the question that you're asking. So if you want something very specific, then you may change your, um, your format accordingly. So for example, I could have what's your sign, and I could leave that as a short answer, and then people can type in, I'm a Libra, or they can type in Libra or they can type in yield because I asked for sign. I didn't ask for what kind of a sign. So you see how short answer gives people room to type, but it also um, opens up, you know, you can get all sorts of different kinds of answers. So you can choose a short answer. Um, paragraph will give them more space to write. Um, multiple choice, obviously, is as it sounds. And you get to customize what the choices are. So you can do things like yes, no, um, or I could do here, I could do uh, Libra and Taurus, you know, et cetera, et cetera. My spelling is terrible at this time of day. You get what I'm saying. Um, so you can use multiple choice. Check boxes is going to give you um, where you can customize the check boxes. Um, a drop down menu would give, um, you'd have some options here and then the person filling out the form would have a drop down menu to choose from um, linear scale a multiple choice grid a checks box grid and a date so for example you are um, you want people to fill in their enrollment date or you want people to fill in the date that they would like to hold their class on it will actually give you the option um, it'll dump the little calendar in here then they can click on the calendar and choose their date
but you can customize, uh, use any sort of question format you want. Um, I'm gonna go back to short answer just for a second. And then a couple things you got down here. Um, so the first one is um, required. So you've probably filled out forms you know, yourself in the past and there'll be like a little asterisk next to it indicating that that question is required. You have to um, if you want that question on your form to be required, then you can click that and see how it turned purple. Now that's a required question. When I click it back off, it's an optional question. Um, if I decide, oh, you know what, I don't like this question, I don't want that to be on my form, I can just click the trash can and I can delete it. Um, and then if I, now I need to add question back in because I don't have any, I can go over to this plus button and I can add a question. Um, this little bar over here also gives me the option to add a title um, description. And you'll see here now that I added that in, this is a separate box. So I have this box here, that's my question one, and then I have this other box, and I can move those. So let's say that I titled this address, and then I titled this question name, but I'm like, that doesn't make sense. I, their name should be first. I can hover over this box and get that little crosshatch thing and click and drag it, and now I can move that question. So each question that you build is its own um, little segment, if you will, and you can move them around. Um, so add question, add a title or description. Um, you can add an image. So if you want to add a picture or something in there, you can do that. Um, you can also add video. Um, and you can add a separate section. So like if your form was particularly long and you wanted to break it into sections, you can do that. All right. So that's kind of how you build a form. And then, like I said, as you're building it, if you want to preview it, you can click on the eyeball and it's going to preview it for you. But that's not the fun part. The fun part is looking at the data. So we're going to go into the form that I asked you guys to fill out so I can show you how cool this is. Um, I'm also going to plug my laptop in because my battery looks like it's getting a little low. One second. Just a little tease here before we get to the good stuff. Okay, so now I've gone in to my folder uh, where I built this form. And you can see here, there's a, this tab uh, for questions is what's um, orange. So that's giving me the question side. Over here in gray is responses, and I've got a 25 there. So that means that 25 of you guys uh, responded to this form. So I can click on responses, and now it's going to show me the responses. And so now I'm looking at the summary. So here I should have a list that's probably going to be about 25 email addresses. Um, and I would encourage you when you have forms for members and prospects and stuff to fill out to make at least some of the contact information fields required questions because then you're capturing contact information and so you can um, follow through with getting back um, to people. Okay, um, and then here we have the names because that was the next question. So that's gonna show me everybody's name. And then we've got our member numbers. And those I just kind of gave you those as examples of, you know, that those were short. Um, well, this field was gonna require an email. Um, these fields are short answer. And so here's kind of an example. I put name last comma first. And you'll see that some people followed my formatting. Some people did not. Some people didn't give me a last name. Um, so that's just kind of an example of how when you ask for or you give a short answer as an option, um, you may or may not get exactly what you're looking for. So if you want um, a really specific answer, you may have to um, choose a different format. Now I have all those member numbers. All right, and this is this is the special sauce here. This is where I totally geek out. Um, so I think this is really kind of cool how it just creates this pie chart for me. So now I can see that 52% of the people who filled out my form, and those are presumably the people that are here on the call tonight, are currently um, at the rank of star. 
And then we've got 12% our senior stars. We've got 12% that are um, at distributor. Um, we've got one platinum. That's our 4%. I'm assuming that's Kristen. And we've got one silver. Um, and then we actually, um, oh, and four, uh, four executives. Uh, no diamonds are above yet, but it's coming. It's coming. I can feel it. Um, so that I think is really sort of cool because that in, I mean, and that could have been any type of question, but it, it kind of gives me an idea of, so now I know who I'm talking to, who's in my audience, where, you know, where are people in terms of, of rank? And then I asked you, are you currently using Google Drive? So now I can see that 60% of my respondents are currently using it, 40% are not. So that tells me, um, you know, some significant information about this group. Um, and then I asked here, what are you hoping to learn from class? So again, this was short answer. So that gave you guys like free space to write. I'm going to have to dig into those a little bit later on. Um, I asked about the state that you live in, because um, I just always think it's kind of fun to know where people are coming from. Again, the... Um, the answer format was short answer. So you'll see that Massachusetts actually shows up in four um, different places because of the way that people wrote it. So if I, um, if I wanted to eliminate that sort of thing from happening, um, I could have um, chosen a different format. I didn't want to enter 52 different potential responses. <laughs> um, um, under a multiple choice or a drop down. So, I mean, I can add these numbers together. Um, and then you'll see here for this one, because I did a checkbox for um, which of these oils do you currently have in your stash, then it gives me the responses. So, 13 people checked off Valor, six people checked off White Angelica, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, um, this last or this question here, how likely are you to go live on Facebook, is in the uh, linear scale uh, format. So that's one where you know you can ask questions like you know how satisfied were you with um, you know the uh, person who presented your 101 class, or you know how satisfied are you with your premium starter kit, or how you know likely are you to sign up for ER in the next three months, or you know, whatever it is that you're asking people for. And this is a good place to do things like, you know, strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, or what have you. Um, so I see, I think, I'm forgetting what my choices were, but this looks like at least four people are like terrified to go on Facebook Live. So hopefully we're gonna change that number a little bit. Um, so that just kind of gives you an example of how you can customize a questionnaire to get some information, and then you have all the data kind of in one spot. And that doesn't go anywhere. Now that's saved, and it's saved in this file. I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna come back out here um, to my folder. So now, like I could make one of these, say for each class, that I did or for each you know promotion that I run or you can really use them however you want there's you know there's really no um, there's really no limits to how you can use the form I use them a whole bunch of different ways just to sort of organize um, information and it's kind of helpful um, the other thing is just I'm just looking at my notes here to make sure I don't forget um, a point that I wanted to make about the form. So the other couple of other things that you can do, um, if you go back into responses, you'll see there's this green icon here. If I hover over it, it says create spreadsheet. So I can click on that button and it's going to give me a couple of options. I can, again, I'm just trying to move this out of my way. Um, I can create a new spreadsheet. Um, with this information, or I can um, select an existing spreadsheet. So for example, tonight's the first time we've done this, so I'm probably gonna create a new spreadsheet. But if I was creating some kind of a contact form, say for prospects or people who attended classes, I could have subsequent ones dump into that original spreadsheet. So I could start a spreadsheet that's for, you know, 
basic 101 class attendees, and then I could continue to add to it with subsequent forms. So each time you go to make the spreadsheet, it will give you that, um, it will give you that choice. So I wanna show you what this looks like because this is also really cool. I can click create, and now look at that. Now I have a spreadsheet with all of that data that I gathered um, out of that form that you guys filled out today. And I don't have to do any of that typing. I don't have to do any of that data entry. Um, it's all right there. And I can pretty quickly um, refer to it. Hey, Kate. Yes. Adam's got a question. Who decides okay. what graph is used for responses? <clears throat> so I'm assuming I think it dumped out. I think it's tied to the question format. Because I did not choose, I never choose like pie graph or bar graph. Um, I think it is determined by the type of question. Okay. Um, so for example, I'm just looking at, so for um, your current um, Young Living rank, I did a, um, a multiple choice. So like it would only allow you to choose one and then it, it dumps that into a pie graph. Um, whereas some of the other ones, like when I did, which of these do you currently have in your stash where you could choose multiple answers, it put that one into a bar graph. So I think that's based on like their algorithm. I think depending on the question format you use is how you get it. Um, Cause that I don't believe I mean, or if that is customizable, I don't know how to do it. That'll okay. Be in the next class. That's a good question. And then <laughs> Ju Julia is asking, uh, you can probably print labels from the spreadsheet, and that's a big yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So again, think about why you want this data and what you want to do with it, and that can sort of drive how you format your questions. If I know that I want to send out label or send out a mailing, and I want to be able to print address labels, then you know, I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm getting or I'm asking for that information. And you could do all sorts of things. You could ask, you know, you could ask people for birth dates or, um, you know, or you could include their, their young living anniversary date if you want to send, you know, a card. And I know, for example, like we can access the enrollment <coughs> out of um, Oily Tools or out of the virtual office, but if it's more convenient for you to have it, you know, excuse me, all in one place, then you can certainly, um, you can certainly do that. But I just think that's amazing that you can just like, boom, dump that into a spreadsheet and it's like right there. Um, yeah, that's, that's powerful. Oh, and, yeah, and last but not least, Adam wants yes. to know if you want to get together for oily mocktails and <laughs> analyze graphs. Always. <laughs> I love drinking and analyzing Day graphs. night. Um, stop talking dirty to me. Your girlfriend's on this call. <laughs> Okay, so that is. She is such a troublemaker. Um, okay, so a couple of other things. I'm just looking at my notes. I want to make sure I'm not forgetting. Um, okay, so a couple of things in terms of formatting. Again, I'm going to go back to my grid. I'm going to go back to Drive so I can go out to the front. I'm like, when in doubt, if you get lost, you're not sure where you are, just go back to the grid, and that's how you find yourself. Um, so the way that um, this will uh, format for you is generally speaking, I clicked on this thing a bunch of times, um, but usually when you come into your drive and open it up, um, it's gonna be like in that alphabetical order like I mentioned. The other things that you can do, you can come over here to the left-hand side um, and you'll see my drive, my computers, so shared with me is kind of a neat thing. So shared with me is where it's going to put files that other people shared with you. So you'll see like here, um, this is the new script that Kristen sent to me. Um, and so because she shared it with me and then I opened it up, it dumps out, you know, it dumps in there. And then there's a bunch of stuff in here. Some of this isn't really Young Living stuff. Um, but this was something that Kara had sent me. Um, this was a sign, a sign up sheet for uh, teaching with Kara. So she had shared this form and then we dumped our names into where we wanted to go. 
So that was a good example of one of those like live forms. Um, recent will give you at the top of the list the files that you have most recently either edited or opened. So you'll see now under today, it shows that oily infusion one that I just opened, the script that I just opened, the form that we were just in. So if you're looking for something that you know you were in recently, that's an easier way to find it. Uh, Google Photos, I'm not gonna click on because this is my business account. <laughs> I don't know who's in here. Um, and then Starred is, uh, so I mentioned earlier when I um, was in a couple of the documents I was showing you, I showed you up at the top that you can star it. So when I clicked on that star, it's gonna save those also in this starred tab. So if there's a, a, a document or a form or file that you use regularly or you want to be able to access quickly, um, starring it kind of allows you to do that. And then you have your trash. So um, I'm actually gonna show you how you can get rid of a document. And similar to taking something on your computer and putting it in the trash can, it goes in the trash can and it will hang out in there for a while until you permanently um, delete it. So if you trash it by mistake, um, you can you know, go back in and get it. Like if you do it right away, don't wait too long. But let me show you um, one other thing. I just, I'm just looking at my paper here. Okay, yeah. All right, so the other thing is that the options that you have for each individual, uh, say, file or document, you can access by right-clicking on that document. So I'm gonna go here, this is our new script, and I'm gonna right-click on there. And then you'll see I've got all of these options. So I can preview it, I can open it, I can share it, I can get a link, I can move it if I wanna put it in a different folder, I can star it if I wanna be able to get to it um, more quickly. I can rename it. I've decided, oh, I wanna call that something different. Um, I can view the details, I can make a copy, and I can download. All right, so make a copy is really a time saver. This is huge. So let's say, for example, we're gonna go back into that um, form that I made for this class. So let's say that you've made a form for a class and then you're gonna do another class. You don't need to recreate that form all over again. You can right click on that and make a copy. And now it's gonna give me a copy of that form. And I can go into that form and I can edit this, just the specific things that I want to change. Um, so, I'll give you an example. Um, I haven't really started doing these for Young Living, but I probably will. But I do forms for all of the home parties that I do with my other business, and I label them with the name of the hostess and the date. And the form is pretty much the same. I just, I want a separate one for each party. So when I, I started with one, and then I make a copy, I go into the copy, and I change the name and the date, and now it's already done. I don't have to build it all over again. Um, even if you're gonna change like half of it, it's probably easier to copy it and just go in and change than to start from scratch. Um, and so now I made that copy that I don't really need, so I'm gonna right click on there, um, and I can, um, oh, where's, I'm losing some of my screen here. There it is, remove, I can't see remove because it's covered by my Zoom, let me move that over. Um, so if I don't want that copy anymore, um, I can click remove, and then that's gonna dump that um, into my trash. Um, and then down here, it says removed one file, and you may have seen for a little while next to it, it said undo, so if that was a mistake, I could just click on undo, um, and it would come back. Um, Google's pretty forgiving. It's fairly user friendly. So, you know, I don't, I know a lot of you guys who are in here are in here because this is a brave new world. Um, so don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're not gonna, you're not, your computer's not gonna explode. Um, you're probably not gonna lose something or not save it because it's doing all that for you automatically. Um, you just kind of have to take, you know, a little bit of time and kind of learn um, your way around. Um, I'm just trying to think, let me look here on this link, start, we talked about, 
Um, okay, so just a couple of ideas about ways that you might use these different features. I've kind of been mentioning them as we've been going along. Um, so obviously uh, documents or, you know, a Google Doc, which is that um, sort of that plain word processing document is going to be great for things like welcome letters or inactive letters, lists, notes, you know, that kind of thing. Think of it as word processing. Um, your sheets is like a spreadsheet. So that's going to be a good tool for tracking, say, follow through with members or expenses versus income or uh, inventory like if you know you want to make a spreadsheet to keep track of the oils that you have especially if you keep a little bit of retail stock you could use um, a spreadsheet for that and then keep in mind that when you build forms and collect data in the forms you can also convert that um, into spreadsheet so that um, and then forms like we were just talking about again if you're going to start a new one don't panic if you can't find it at first forms is hidden under that little more um, folder um, you can go into forms and forms are great for collecting data say for like a facebook live class or a zoom class you want to collect um, contact information from attendees uh, you can use forms to track giveaways and promos um, it's also nice for storing and organizing contact information. Um, they also can be used for feedback. Like you could do a survey, um, you ask, you know, like a satisfaction survey or ask your team um, for, you know, more information about places where they need support. And that might help you to plan, you know, some of your team um, exercises or that type of thing. Um, okay. So that is sort of my, I'm going to click back out of here. That's kind of my Google Docs um, little 101. I hope that was kind of helpful. Um, are there, I know that Kristen was kind of managing questions. Is there anything that I didn't get to? Um, that no, I don't want to? think so. I think we've pretty much hit okay. all the questions as they've come in. A lot of people had to jump off because phones were dying. <laughs> <laughs> I know we did pretty good. I was the trying to keep it to an hour. is real. So this is awesome. So that's not so that's not too bad. No. Um, I know I had mentioned I could do a little um, quickie on how to do Facebook Live because I know there are a few people that don't know how to get into um, Facebook Live. I think. Yeah, I would. I would touch I can, on that. Definitely touch on that on my phone because um, we have Facebook Live class coming up next week. Yes. With our team. Yes, yes. People. We've got a lot of new folks that are going to be um, doing that for the first time. So if so we could just a quick run through on that, that would be awesome. Yes. Right. So I'm going to attempt to do that as you, I don't know how well you guys can see my phone through this webcam. Yes. Um, but the first thing that I want to say about Facebook Live, because I think this is where um, a lot of times people sometimes get into trouble, is that you have to do it on, um, on your phone you can't it won't work on your computer so um, I made the mistake the first time of like oh it'll be easier if I just put my laptop on the table uh, Facebook live is a feature that's only in their mobile application so it will work on your phone or on a tablet um, but it's not available um, on Facebook if you're on um, a laptop or on um, a computer so just save yourself the, the hassle um, <clears throat> right and then in order to, so when you want to go live on Facebook, you want to go into the group or the event where you want to go live. So for example, when um, the team Facebook Live class happens next week, if you are teaching in that class, you are going to go into the event. Um, so for example, let me find my Facebook app. So I would open up Facebook. The lighting is terrible. Um, and then I'm going to go down to my little place where I get my list of events. I'm trying to turn this so you guys can like sort of see the screen. Um, but I would click on events and then I would go in and I would go right into the event. So I'm not actually going to go live in your event for next week, Kristen. But <laughs> show them how it works. Um, so, okay, so now I am here in my list of events, and I would open up the event. Let's see, we're just going to pick it here. Open up an event, 
and then I'm going to go to where there's a post, right? So I scroll down kind of underneath that introductory thing, and then I see my little avatar. So there's my little face. I'm realizing I have to update this because it's me in my Christmas dress. Um, and then it says write something. And underneath write something, I have um, a button that I could click for a camera. So that would allow me to take a photo. Um, or it gives me an option to go live. So if I tap that go live button, then it's going to open up um, a screen that's going to look like this. Now, right now, that is my camera on the back of my phone is active. And so what you're seeing through the camera is the <clears throat> other side of the room. Um, Generally speaking, when we're doing Facebook Live, we want to flip the camera around. Um, so up here, hold on, sorry. Um, we've got that little symbol there. That's to flip the camera around. Um, it's usually up in that top corner. Sometimes it's someplace else, but that's what you're looking for. It kind of looks like a camera with two little arrows inside. So I would tap that and it would flip the camera around. So now I would be, um, I would be able to see myself. If I angle this right, you can kind of see that I can see myself. Almost. I'm perceptually impaired, so this is, <laughs> a, little bit, this is a little bit tricky. But you get the idea. So when I, when I flip that camera around, that's going to allow me um, to uh, point, you know, to see myself in the camera. And then you have a place here. Again, it's a little bit tricky to see, but you know, take your phones out later and you know, just try it out. You don't, you're not live until you hit start live. So you'll see there's like a blue button down here that says start live video. I have not touched that button, so I'm not broadcasting. I'm just getting set up. So I can go in here to where it says um, tap to add a description and I can label my video. So if I am going live in my oily OT group on Friday evening to do an oily cocktail, as I frequently do, um, I will type in that line, you know, um, gin tonic with lime vitality or, you know, cocktails with the oily OT or whatever I want to call the video, I'm going to type in there. Generally, when we do our Facebook Live classes, we try to number the posts. Mm -hmm. That way, when people are coming back to watch them later on, um, it's a little bit easier to find. So if I'm doing a Facebook Live class, I'll usually say something like video number one or video one of seven, um, you know, just to kind of make it a little bit easier for the viewer. So you can use that line to describe uh, the video however you want. Um, and then when you are ready to go live, you're going to hit uh, start live video. So I'm not going to actually do that because we're not really going live. Um, the other thing is that when you are live, so maybe I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go into my group because actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go live in the Facebook event for this technology class. Because then it will just be us looking at it. And if I am silly, then it doesn't all right, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through quickly how I did that. So I've opened up the event. I'm gonna click on write something. Now I wanna sh try to show you, this is super frustrating, I can't show you my screen better. I'm gonna kind of tip it like this. So when I first opened that up, I didn't have the two buttons that said camera or go live for choices. Why it shows up sometimes and doesn't show up other times, I do not know. But if you get to, if you want to post live on your Facebook page or in your group or wherever, you're going to go just like you were going to post anything else. So if I go in here where it says write something, once I tap in there, then I should also get these other choices down at the bottom. So if you don't have that go live button um, right underneath the post um, box, when you tap in the post box, you should get it as a choice. So now I have a choice to do photo or video, live video, check-in, feelings, activity, sticker, tag people, etc. So I can go to live video. So now we're back here at this screen where I am going to reverse my camera. So now it's going to show my smiley face. Um, and then tap to add description. So I'm just going to type there um, Facebook live demo. 
And this is crazy because I'm going live on Facebook and live on Zoom at the same time. So who knows what's going to happen? Um, okay, so Facebook Live demo. I've typed in uh, what I'm titling my video. And then you'll see up here there's a button that says done. Okay, so now I'm back to that screen. And again, I'm not live until I hit that start live video button. So I'm going to do that now. And it pauses a little bit. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so I am just uh, going live in here to follow through with my example of how to go live on Facebook. So I pushed the go live video button and it gives you about a three or four second pause. So it's, when it comes on, the screen will actually be a little bit um, like darkened and it will say, you know, starting video in, there's like little, um, like a little swirly thing going around. So you kind of have, you know, a, a few seconds to kind of pull yourself together. You can kind of see, um, you know, how you're showing up in the camera or whatnot. And then you can start um, talking to your audience. Um, you have a couple of options. Um, so right now, the way I have it, um, it's just, I have the full screen. I don't have the comments showing. I can slide my finger across the screen and it's going to show me um, who's viewing. It's also going to show me who else is there um, that I could invite. And this is actually um, the way that you can do side by side. I don't know if any of you saw a while ago, I went like side by side with Kara. We tried that out. Um, so I'm trying to see if, um, doesn't look like there's anybody else there. So if any of you guys, for example, were watching this Facebook live video, I could tap on you and enjoy, invite you to come and join me. And we could actually go split screen. So split screen is kind of a cool thing you can do um, to, uh, if you're teaching, if you're co-teaching like with another person. And then when I'm done with this, which I'm going to do now, because it's kind of weird that I'm broadcasting in two different places. Oh, look, here's Adam. Adam, I'm going to tap on you. We're going to bring Adam on camera. I'm putting you on the spot, dude. Let's see if he's going to accept my... Okay, so there's Adam. So now Adam is on the screen with me. So we could actually, um, we could teach something together or we could be having a conversation back and forth, kind of like they do on CNN, you know, like going live to Adam Faria in New Bedford. Hi, Cheryl. Um, where's Quinn? I thought Quinn would be like photobombing. Um, but anyway, so then they jumped out. But you can kind of see, um, you can kind of see how that works. And if you can't see it on the Zoom, go in later to this because this is ridiculous. I'm making a fool of myself on live Facebook. Um, and then when you're done, there's a finish button at the bottom. So I'm just going to tap on the finish button and that's going to end the live video, put you guys out of your misery. Um, and then it's going to give you um, the option to post it. And so then I always, um, I might actually delete it <laughs> in this situation, but normally I would click post. Um, I think I'm going to hit delete. So I'm going to delete that video. But that's just kind of to give you um, I'm an idea. Of, <laughs> you're offended. I'm sorry. We'll make another one. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of a little, um, a little basics on um, how you do Facebook Live. Uh, a couple of things that come up um, I didn't mention when I was doing that. So the other thing is you can uh, also swipe. Um, if people are commenting, their comments will show up um, on your screen. If that's distracting, you can swipe and it'll hide them. So if you don't want to see all of that while you're speaking, you can swipe and it'll hide it and you can go back and check it out um, later on. Um, a couple of other tips as far as Facebook Live, um, mostly that I've learned um, by making these mistakes, so I'll try to spare you. Make sure that your phone is well charged before you start because since you're using camera, taking video, and also broadcasting it um, on the internet, it uses a fair amount of battery. Um, so for example, if any of you are teaching in the team speed oiling class uh, next week before class starts, you want to make sure that you have a well-charged battery. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure that you're somewhere where you have a decent um, internet uh, connection. 
I know that one of the reasons why Kristen goes live from the loo um, and why I tend to go live from my super messy craft room is because it's where I can get good uh, connection and where there's a door I can close. Um, I would prefer to do a lot of my Facebook lives upstairs in my home office, but that's far away from the router. And I tend to get, um, the internet connection tends to break and then your video will get dumped and that can end up making it kind of choppy. And, you know, people might come back once, they're probably not gonna keep coming back and back again um, if your video keeps cutting out, they're just gonna kind of move on. So. Um, you might experiment a little bit, find a spot, you know, in your house or where you're doing this, um, where you can get a good um, connection. Okay, so that's a little bit Facebook Live. Um, it's 20 past nine, so in the interest of being respectful of your time, I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, I wanna thank all of you guys for participating. And I'm hoping um, people are gonna leave um, either some comments here in this thread on the side um, or in the um, Facebook event, um, maybe with other topics that you're interested in that we can try to address. Um, I know another one is uh, graphic design and doing some of like the pictures and um, with words and stuff on them that you see a lot of us posting. Um, that is, definitely something that we can do but i think we probably need to tackle that um, as a separate um as a separate class so again um kristen is recording this so um for the people that missed it if there's members of your team that didn't get to um jump on here tonight certainly um we'll get the link out and you can share it um i hope that this was helpful information and uh, have a great evening, everybody. This was awesome. Thank you, Kate. You are amazing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Technology goddess. All right. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Technically, that's true. Totally. All right. All right. I, I I've lost my video. It's officially hit. I've hit, jumped the shark. Um, I'm gonna. Start